Welcome back. We are still discussing the presidential broadcast that was uh, uh, released live to everyone yesterday. And still on the broadcast, uh, APC has come hard on the opposition PDP over their criticism of president's speech. According to APC spokesman Naibena Yekini, the president is justified with his allusion that past PDP presidents brought hardship to the country and that he has done well with the scarce resources available to his administration. Joining us to hear the other side of the argument is a member of PDP and also, okay, let me not review the other part of his uh, description. Uh, and that is Oladimeji Fabi joining us from Abuja. Good evening, Mr. Oladimeji. Good, e good evening, Kaudi. Good evening, Nigeria. Yeah, I want to believe that uh, you also listened to our first guest where he explained some of these issues. So, straight to the point, what is the issue with the presidential broadcast yesterday? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, I was on the road. I couldn't hear much of the first, uh, the other guy that spoke. Uh, but I have been able to go through the, the speech of, the, of Mr. President. And as far as, personally, as far as I know, um, it doesn't really uh, inspire anything as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, it revolves around those things that we've always known, we've always heard. It's, it remains that vicious circle. Um, uh, the only thing I want to take away from there is the unity, Mr. President, um, that could give him a, I mean, uh, the average is, a, is the issue of uh, togetherness that the theme was, uh, he talked about. And then one would wonder, why is it just now that we need to be talking about this unity when there are so many things that have happened since the beginning of this government that has not, you know, promoted unity in this country? One of such is, um, is, is about lopsided appointment that people are crying about in Nigeria, whereby some sections of the country were justicing, they were not carried along in the, in the appointment, you know, that this government has made so far. So as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't inspire any hope. And I stand with my party with what they, uh, with what, what they said about it. And the, the, the entire Nigerians expected more from Mr. President than what he told us uh, yesterday. As far as I know and as far as I, con as I, I am concerned, I, it doesn't inspire any hope at all. Okay. And it doesn't give us this confidence that this government has, it still has what it takes you know, in the last part of their tenure to give Nigeria that fair deal, that great that Nigerians deserve. Let, let's get a bit political now, um, because the president, uh, one of the things he said yesterday was that uh, in clear times, he said those in the previous government from 1999 to 2015 who presided over the near destruction of the country, please underline that word, near destruction of the country, have now the impudence to attempt to criticize our effort. What he's saying is anybody could have criticized him, not from those who almost destroyed the country. Well, Kaudi, uh, that is uh, very, very unfortunate. And number one, apart from the fact that it's ridiculous, it's very laughable for Mr. President to have said pre pre previous government didn't do anything and they nearly destroyed the country. Now, let me take them up on this. And then uh, let me, let me, let me, the, this, the, the, this republic started in 1999. And Nigeria was fortunate to have two great gentlemen to lead you know, to, 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 to provide that dynamism that, I mean, that is just like a vehicle. When you need to move a vehicle, you need a very strong gear. For, I mean, gear yeah, one to be able to move the vehicle, you know, get rolling. And uh, Nigeria was fortunate to have the person of former President Lucia Shegun of and and Atiku Abubakar leading the battle. After many years of military rule, these gentlemen came on board and then and they took over the mantle of leadership and they succeeded in creating that, that balance, that platform for good governance of this country. And I'll tell you some of the things they did. Um, uh, one thing that is very critical, because what Mr. President said yesterday, to many Nigerians, they were, very, they were shocked that that was coming from Mr. President. Obasanjo and Atiku Abubakar did something that was very marvelous. That, that, that even if, the, if, if, the, if the, that, that were to be today, I don't think this current government has the capacity to achieve it. And that was writing up the debt, our foreign Nigerian foreign debt. 
and why at the same time maintaining and represented this this is an annual GDP growth. This government has brought us back to less than 2% GDP growth. That was a period of national restoration. Facts don't lie. You can go and do it. When these, these people came on board, they created many institutions that have brought the country to where it is today. And now Mr. President was saying they, 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 they almost collapsed the country. I don't know where that is coming from. He is a beneficiary of some of the things that these people did. I remember when this government, when the government of Obama and the people came on board, the petrol, the food price was twenty-two dollar per barrel, and yet they were able to manage the economy, they were able to put the country in good stead, they were able to build roads, build infrastructure, they were able to do so many. What have you been hearing about this government? No money because they can't think outside the box. These were the people that created a near collapsed country. And they brought it back to the poor, and Nigeria is where it is today. And nobody is perfect. I know government, no government is perfect. Aladdin but Meiji. what I want to tell the government of this country is that Aladdin even Meiji. if you met a near collapse, let's ag agree without considering that you uh, met a near collapse. Country. What are you supposed to do? You came and you told Nigeria, well, I'm going to fix it. Why is it difficult for them okay. to fix it? Because they can't think outside the box. Aladdin Meiji, let's, let's put it within context of uh, what the president actually said. He said, they have scarce resources. I can't remember when the oil price dropped as low as $25 per barrel. I can't remember when it dropped that much. But under this administration, we've had it this low. Don't you think they deserve some kind of kudos in terms of the scarce resources? I know there was. One of us and Joe came on board. Crude price was about $22. And these guys were able to show up the economy. And I told you that at that time, they would have maintained an unprecedented 6% annual GDP growth. It's on record. Facts don't lie. So I don't know what Mr. President meant by saying that uh, the, the, the previous government, they, they, they almost collapsed the country. Now, at that time, let me, there's no basis for comparison, Kyle Day. How many? Let's, 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 let's play. Let's, let's, let's put it on the table. How many suicides do we have at that time? Today, a lot of people are jumping into lagoon because of the bad economic policy of this government. How many families have been destroyed because of bad economic policies and social programs of this, of this government? How many do you, did you have at that time? Did you hear about suicide at that time? No suicide. A lot of people are committing suicide now. Some homes have been, have been destroyed. The economy is in bashing. The best time Nigeria experienced economic progress was at that time when PDP was in power. And they came, they, they, they destroyed everything. They destroyed everything. So he promised us insecurity. Is that what you want to say? At that time, you can travel by, by night from Abuja to Kadlo. Can you do that now? At that time, hello? I can hear you. Hello? I, I, At that I, time, no, no, no. Is, is it the same of the security we have in the country we have, that we have now? Okay. The petroleum oil price was how much? Aladdin Meiji. Capital. Look at our foreign exchange. Aladdin Meiji. Since, since, you seems, time, since it seems you have so much. It's been a change for now. It appears you're very close. It's unfortunate. It appears you're very close to President Olusha Govazajo and Atiku. But can you now explain what uh, our previous speaker said, which we're not able to listen to? What happened to the $16 billion spent on power? And here we are. Can, 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 uh, that, that is very, very absurd, sincerely speaking. Now look at our debt ratio. How much was our debt ratio when the opportunity government was leaving the place? How much do we have now? According to DMO, over $31 billion is our debt profile now in Nigeria. Now the $16 billion we're talking about was that money really spent. Now there was something that this government did in, in, in the fight of this uh, corruption. There was something that happened in NMPC about $1 billion scam in the NMPC. Till tomorrow, this government will tell you that there's nothing like that. So then you bring the facts to the table. The facts don't lie. Okay, quickly, quickly, because of our time, I also want you to react to some of the things he said. One of the things he said is that it was during the PDP we had uh, do-or-die politics, quoting what the former president was, was, uh, was said to have said. And uh, do or die politics where results are skewed to one side, probably the ruling party. Now, this is an uh, accusation from 
the ruling party. Kayode, Kayode, thank you very much. I asked them for the statistics of how many people were killed during elections of those days. Compared to the number of deaths, the killings we had in our election in this look, let me give you an example. Go to look at Kogi election where they were killing people. Look at Kogi election where they were killing people. Look at our last general election where they kill people in Lagos. So we, where is the do or die? This guy knew they don't have what it takes, and they are still there. They are still forcing themselves on Nigerians. This is this is this is, this is not it. So let's compare it. How many deaths? We had elections in 2003. How many dead did you record? In 2007, how many dead did you record? Now compared to 2019 and all the standalone elections that are taking place. Let's look at the, let's look at the politics. That is a disputable narrative that will never hold water anywhere. Okay. Uh, uh, before you go, let me also get your last comment on this. I haven't criticized this government. What are the alternatives? Where is the way forward? Because criticism is usually well suited if you have a better argument. Well, let me let me just uh, quickly say this because I don't want to lose track of it. In in the president's speech, he talked about uh, uh, it would be unfair, it would be unthinkable. Uh, he, he made a, he made a statement on, on on our petroleum pump price and all that. Uh, that again is very very unfortunate. And then I don't think uh, the economic team, if truly they are in existence, I don't think they rightly guided Mr. President in that regard. Nigerians are very angry. Nigeria felt bitter about that statement that uh, when Mr. President started making comparison about what we do here in terms of our phone price compared to other countries. And the question people have been asking is, what are the, what are the indices? Uh, what is the living wage? What is the per capita income of those people compared to what, what, we, what we have in Nigeria today? This is very, very unfortunate, and I think uh, those who are around the president should tell him the truth. They should uh, stop deceiving him and stop his, his guiding Mr. President. Nigerians are not fools. We are aware. Our eyes are widely open. See, Nigerians will not forget. This, will not forgive this government because there is no president in the history of Nigeria that has had the kind of latitude and opportunity and support Nigeria has given any president that like, like they give uh, President uh, Muhammadu Buhari. Nigerians will not forgive them if they don't change their ways. Mr. President should look at it. We should reach out to other people who can make his government work. This government is not working. This thing is not working. And that is the truth. There is no iota of integrity in this government. When they talk about it, they don't have it. Some, so the other time we saw the son of uh, a AG, AGF wedding, spending dollars. And who knows what all, all the sons of their, of, 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 their, of their people in the villa are there driving expensive cars across country while Nigerians are, are wallowing in poverty, in and what, poverty and anger. And what, what, was, what is was the, the solution? What, they, what, was Nigeria declared uh, uh, a capital of okay. poverty in the world in, 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 in PDP government? Is in this government that Nigeria was declared. I wanted uh, you to prefer a solution, but. Uh, capital of poverty. It appears. So for me, Mr. President should reach out. You have okay. a solution. He should reach out to those who can help him. The people around him are Team C. They don't have what he should look for Team A to help him. The little <laughs> time he's remain, he has, he should do something. Okay, that, Fabi. That, 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 he should be on the side of Nigeria for now. He has Fabi, to do, he still has time to do that. In the next two, three years, he should do something that will put smiles on the face of Nigerians. That's what we're saying. Thank you so much, uh, Ola Dimeji Fabi, a member of the PDP, for your take on this issue. We'll call you some other time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, we'll take a short break. And quickly, I will be giving you my take on this issue. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take. To our leaders, past and present, whether APC or PDP, please ask yourself these pertinent questions. Is this the country bequeathed to you at independence? Is this the whole promise 60 years ago? If Nigeria were your father and at 60 unable to inspire hope in you, will you celebrate him? A country where good deeds are condemned and evil celebrated is not celebrated? where inequality is equal in the eyes of the leaders should seek truth first before honor. A country that dies daily yet live. If we must celebrate, let's give the future back to the kids it belongs to. Wear sack clothes and till the soil for the benefit of our future while begging for forgiveness. Otherwise, the hallowed shall become hollow 
and the executive shall be ransacked, while the arbiter shall become the obiter. That is my take on tonight's discussion. I am Cardi Lade in the Plus Politics returns on Monday. But in the meantime, you can watch a repeat on, all, on, on our station tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday at the same time. That's bye for now. I remain yours truly, Coyote, Ladeni, saying bye.